It is now day 36 of Iceland's latest eruption of the Reykjanes volcano, and soon, instead of having one eruption, we may have two separate simultaneous eruptions occurring from the same volcano. That is, only if the still ongoing weak lava effusion manages to somehow continue for another two to three weeks. On the surface, lava effusion has decreased from 3.6 to 3.1 cubic meters per second during the last 10 days, and is now only 3.3% above the absolute minimum needed to support an eruption. If lava effusion drops below 3 cubic meters per second, the eruption will likely end. Despite all of this, at depth, the underlying magma chamber which is feeding the current eruption is pushing the ground upwards, indicating that more magma is going into the magma chamber than is exiting it. This is pushing the ground upwards, and as a result, if the volume of magma in this magma chamber reaches between 8.4 million and 13.8 million cubic meters, a second magma run event is likely to occur. While in previous diagrams, I have represented the conduit between the 5km depth magma chamber and the 15km long dike in place on November 10th of last year as a singular line, in reality, it is more like a series of veins in a person which do not touch one another. Thus, in 2-3 to three weeks time, the magma chamber which currently holds 6.2 million cubic meters of molten rock could send magma to the east but not touch a pre-existing active magma conduit. And this is how two simultaneous separate eruptions could occur at the same time. However, due to how magmas behave, if a second eruption was to occur, it would most likely begin either northeast or southwest of the still weakly erupting spatter cone. There is also the possibility that such a magma run could merely cause a resurgence in activity of the now 34 meter, 112 foot tall spatter cone, although this seems less likely in my opinion. Although, if a second eruption does simultaneously occur, it will almost certainly be brief and cause the first eruption to end fairly shortly after due to both pulling from a reservoir faster than it can be refilled. If this does not occur, the current Reckoners eruption could end today, tomorrow, or sometime in the next several weeks. Despite all attempts at forecasting how long the still ongoing eruption would last, it has defied all expectations and continued to erupt. Every day, another 268,000 cubic meters of molten rock is in place, which has resulted in slight expansions of the existing 6.2 square kilometer lava field. On the adjacent and close by lava fields in place since 2021, you may have noted that over time colorful regions of white, yellow, and orange mineralization have popped up on the surface of basaltic lava flows. These mark examples of fumarole minerals, as since lava flows can take years or decades to cool, depending on their thickness, degassing material once it drops to lower temperatures can accumulate on nearby rock surfaces. While the full catalogue of minerals at the Fagradolsviak and Reckoners volcanoes have not been made, we can make an educated guess that the following minerals are present. The most common fumarolic mineral is native sulfur, which depending on inclusions the sulfur naturally has can result in yellow, yellow-orange, or orange deposits of this native element. The white crusts largely represent the mineral cell ammoniac, although there is also gypsum, jacobsonite, cryptohalite, and many a lovite present which can all have a similar coloration. I want to briefly mention that one of the Reckoners Volcano's active hazard zone sections was reduced in intensity, going from red to orange on April 16th, and affecting most of the town of Grindavik. As a final note, I would like to thank my new patron, Eowyn Sewipper, for supporting this channel.